name is William Salisbury. Today we're going to go over creating custom components in CatWorks 2016. As you can see, we already have a little piping model right here. I'm going to go ahead and create a valve that's going to go onto this uh, threaded piping right here, plain both ends. So you're going to go ahead. First thing you want to do is you need to build your uh, 3D body. So we're going to go ahead and create something just that. We'll go ahead and switch to a 2D perspective. Okay, so we can see that, that same area that we're attaching to right here. Okay, you want to know your uh, dimensions. Normally, you can pull that from a cut sheet. So, in this case, we're going to say two inches for the hub, uh, one inch thick. Okay, so let's say that's our hub part for the, uh, the valve that we want to create. Okay. And let's say between these two points. Okay. Um, the entire time when you're creating this, you want to start off with 2D stuff so you can size it up just right given your uh, cut sheet. So here I've created some really basic 2D objects that I'm going to uh, revolve to make them into 3D. So here we have a hub and our center body. So we're going to revolve those. Okay, we revolve it. This is a sphere, so I don't have to make that 3D. I don't need this since this is a symmetrical component. Copy that. Okay, so now we've created the body for our object. As you can see here. Now, normally you'd want to do this in a in a new drawing. That way you can save it out for future use. In this case, we're not doing that. I just wanted to go ahead and create it live. So we're in the, the drawing we're going to be putting it in. And that doesn't cause any major issues that I know of yet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, is build your 3D objects. So I have some cylinders, a cone, a sphere, and we're going to unify those using the union command. So here we go. Okay, it's all one piece. Uh, one good way to check, let's move it out of the way, make sure there's no little pieces staying behind. Because if it's not part of this one unioned 3D object, it's not going to be uh, in your component. So if you double click, you'll see that up top it says 3D solid. That means you're good to go. Okay, so after we have our 3D object saved, normally you want that, again, in a separate drawing, uh, put it somewhere to the side. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the user create command. Okay, and pull this over here. Uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, come up with your name. What this is going to do is build a data file that's associated with this component and it's going to copy this component to its own CAD file. Um, in this case, the the project I'm running doesn't have any. Normally it will pre-populate with all the data files you've already built for user shapes. So we're going to say a uh, ball valve. It's good to come up with a standard notation that you use for this. Okay, so we're going to make a socket weld ball valve. And let's say we have a particular vendor like Fisher. Okay. Um, you can build multiple sizes into a data table, but uh, the problem with that is you need to make sure that their qualities match up because you're only going to specify one length right here. So, as long as the length isn't an issue where you, you don't want the metadata to, to match up properly, then uh, you can put multiple sizes in there without causing too much of a hassle. Okay, uh, weight. It's good to have this accurate if you do center of gravity studies. Um, it's not super essential for regular piping. Um, if you're just running ISOs and stuff like that. But if you do stress analysis and center of gravity, uh, it's good to have your weights accurate. Um, length, I don't know what this is. I should have measured it before I did it. Well, let's go ahead and say six inches. Okay. Uh, the length is default to inches. Um, weight is default to pounds. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put in a default description. And let's say in this case, this is a specialty item. So we'll say um, SP, spec. A generic way to reference the spec that's being used uh, instead of having to actually write out the long description. 
and SPD finish. Now, uh, the designer has the extra step that when they actually put this into the model, they will need to reference the actual numbers for that specialty item so that this is accurate. Um, our, our isosymmetric symbol information, this is how it's going to represent on, on ISO if it's printed out. Okay, uh, you see down here I have my symbol editor open. You can preview what the different skis look like from here. Um, here I'm in the valves uh, category for ball valves and VB, the star star. The star star is, is a placeholder for its end types. So this could be used for any kind of ball valve, whether it's a, a race face or a uh, RTJ or threaded or whatever else have you. Okay. Unfortunately, that little VB doesn't give us enough to actually identify the ski. So we have to go and go to our uh, default install directory for Windows 16. For, sorry, oh, Calwork 16, plant, isogen, iconfig, RSDLL, so there's your nine. And then here's ski symbols PDF. This PDF contains all the ski symbols that come default with the software. And the, there's two parts that you're going to need in here. Now, you're just, you know, come into introductions. I've come down to the valve category, and this is the valve header. So, all this stuff is the different kinds of valve symbology that Calwork comes with default. Um, I want a ball valve, which we have right here. The two things you need to recall from here are the ski and the PCF identifier. Um, so the PCF identifier is like the category that the ski falls under. So we're going to copy that. It's valve. It's very important to get this exactly right. Um, and, and, and in the case of the ski, uh, capital letters do actually matter. So you need to make sure your caps lock is proper with whatever you're getting from here. So I'm saying this is a valve identifier, and that the uh, ski is VB. This is a uh, uh, socket ball component, so we're going to say plane end PL. Pl PL is for plane. Is the is the end type identifier. So if you don't know those, you know, kind of uh, you can leave in star star. I just prefer to be explicit when I know what uh, end types I'm going to be using. Okay, so the first thing you wanted to do, maybe even before you started the user shape process, is uh, setting up your sizes. I can go ahead and do that from here. I know what I want it to be one inch, so we're already good. You can change it. Uh, you can set it reducing, uh, but you have to do that right now because if you make this, you can't come back and switch it to a reducing component afterwards. You have to start all over. So we're going to go ahead and select a 3D component. Click it. Right click okay. and want you to pick an insertion point. So just watch, watch over here for your command prompts. So we're going to go ahead and say, now since this is plain end, it will it will terminate at the face. If it's a threaded component, you need to know your engagement. Uh, in this case, we're plain end. So we're just going to grab right there. Okay, now we've identified how we're inserting the component. We also need to identify the different connections that are available. Um, this can differ a little bit if you're doing a component that changes direction, like an angle valve or something like that. And in this case, we just have you know two points that are going to be uh, intelligent, uh, one on both sides of the component. So we can pop that there. That'll be our main. And then it says, hey, do you have another point? If so, click it. So click it, and then you indicate the direction that you're coming from. So you never want to come into the component. You're always going away, like as if you were piping away from the component. Which way would you go? Okay. So after you've selected all the points that are intelligent, right click. Okay. Uh, there's one more step in this process. Uh, it wants to know, hey, what kind of in connections are these going to be? If if it's all going to be the same, like in this case, where everything's going to be plain end because it's socketed, you can click this to save time, and that just makes it so that whatever you pick here, it gets applied to all. Now, uh, this this list will differ depending on what your company has built up. Um, it's good to have generics, like a generic butt well, threaded, socket well, and what have you. In my case, the, this particular client hasn't built up the standards, so they just have a lot of specific situations for the in connections here. So we have socket weld, and we find ourselves a ball valve, and you want to make sure that your, your class is matched, even though that's not, not, it's not necessarily a in game right there if, it, if it's not. So we're going to go ahead and get that. We're saying socket welds the symbology and we are good to go. It's good to check over everything, make sure you have your long and short script is correct. And everything on your ski is correct. 
and if you have the proper information for weight and like now whatever uh, spec you're currently running in this case I'm running my PL 150 stainless steel okay that's where this uh, data file is going to be associated with so when you make this you're basically copying that data file into this spec okay make sure these match up with it these should be pulled from the spec that you're uh, that you're currently running when you build the component okay so click OK might take a second there you go and as you see it, it cannibalizes the uh, the uh, component and takes it away um, that's why it's good to have it in a separate drawing uh, after you would do that component after you would do that process you would actually uh, not save because you want to keep that component for future use if in case there's another component you need to build that has a slight modification from that okay and now that we've done that we're going to come over here to the spec and we're going to go ahead and go into the project file other sorry let me grab this up real quick yes so the project file is similar to older versions of CalWorks where you had a spec library now you have all that kind of pushed into this one big utility so as you can see here we are in the BW project this is the PL 150 SS stainless steel spec okay so that's the one that we just modified now we didn't actually modify this spec it's pulling it from a catalog which is where the actual change happened go ahead and open this up so you can see what we actually produced in this catalog the BW catalog go to data tables user shapes user one and look for the thing that created ball valve socket load fixture now as you can see expand this out make it a little more clear this is the one entry that we just created so we're saying that the main size is one inch it's got a type two this is where the actual the name of the drawing is because when you create that it creates a new CAD file and that CAD file gets stored in the, uh, the project uh, folder so uh, you need to make sure that if you're not running off of a network standard that everyone has that drawing copied into their into their system as well as an updated version of this catalog and the spec okay and you these are the points that we defined as connections on that 3d component that's in this drawing okay so that's where we are there once we opened up this prj uh, the project file it copied that standard down so as we go into user shapes, you can see right here the SPXXX that we just built is right here. Now you may notice uh, exclamation mark saying, hey, uh, we're missing stuff. Material size, if you hover, you get the little description of what's going on. Um, material at size one is not assigned, user group shapes, yada, yada, yada. So it tells you, hey, this is stuff that you need to fix. Uh, normally you can fix it just by using, if you have your uh, project, specification schedule set up over here you can just use that uh, I like to use the pipe schedule because that's normally uh, something that's always set up and you also want to have a material specified I created a generic not specified just to get rid of those little things in the cases where your company or your client doesn't care about uh, the material so um, you can create the material over here you can see kind of a little preview of the catalog I in the material tables you see these different options the uh, more common is ASTM A106 or A105s um, I created a not specified and allowed all the component types to pull from it that way I can fill in that slot and kind of make it look cleaner on the, uh, the in presentation here now some clients do want that uh, built in so they can use uh, intelligent nodes in the long description that allows them to pull from this list instead of having to retype it every time they want to type a component. They can modify everything from here. Okay. So now that we have our component in the spec, you want to go ahead and save. Uh, if you make any changes, always apply those changes before you save because it won't. It will just remove them or erase them if you do not apply it at the, at the component level. So we saved it here. We're also going to save it right there. Okay. And after you don't see the save anymore, you know that you are locked and loaded to go. Okay, we're back in our uh, in our first uh, piping drawing. We're going to come here now. The component will automatically generate here. It needs you need to refresh to make sure you're really getting in the live data. So refresh your spec. Make sure you're still running on the same size and specification. So we're going to click here, 
and there we go. There's our intelligent user created component, SPXXX. And we can go ahead and move that right to our pipe. As you can see, we're not seeing the, the cross show up, so that is live and connected. And inside here, under our isogen, we can see that it has the valve VBSC. Oh, it wants to say SC for screwed because this was a threaded, uh, threaded line. So you want to switch that back to PL. So that, that's all depending on what line you're pulling into. Okay. So that should get you there. If you have any questions, uh, just email us or call us at Drafting Book Design. Thank you.